We're gonna to fly to the North London Derby via a mystery European country for less than a train ticket to London. But if anything goes wrong, we'll miss the game altogether. No, we are gonna miss this flight. Before we get into the cost of each flight, which country we're flying to, and how we managed to find the flights in the first place, let's tell you why we're doing this. Why are they so expensive? For those of you that don't know, after the Old Firm, the El Clasico and Brentford Fulham, the North London Derby is without doubt the biggest sporting fixture in the football calendar. Arsenal haven't won a Premier League trophy in over 20 years and Tottenham's trophy cabinet is still being propped up by Harry Kane's Golden Boot Awards. But despite these similarities, the two teams absolutely despise each other. <laughs> Watching this fierce rivalry in person is the hottest seat in town and tickets don't come cheap. Unfortunately, we spent all our money on two tickets to the big game and now we don't have enough to get us down to London to watch it. Let's try and find some train tickets. Manchester Piccadilly and we want to go to Tottenham Hale. Do you know how much these tickets are? Okay, I want you to guess how much the train to London is. £50. Pound. Higher. 70 Higher. Higher than 70 It can't be over 100 We want to get the 10.35 because it only has one change. And it is £77.60. And with the booking fee, it's £80 per person. But luckily, I've found another way. We are taking the scenic route instead. Thank you, mate. We're at Manchester Airport and we're getting ready for our flight. We're getting two flights today, so this is our first stop. Something that's just occurred to me is we're flying into Europe. So in theory, not only are we going to be able to get there for cheaper than the train, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to get the three o'clock kickoffs as well. Yeah, imagine that. Not only do we able to get there for cheaper, but we get a pint and the three o'clock kickoffs. <sighs> if that happens, I'd be over the moon. This challenge is only made achievable by flying with Ryanair. There we go, what a majestic beast. I still can't believe just how much this flight costs that we are about to get on. It is so cheap. We managed to get our first flight for £22 per person. £22. And let me just remind you that the train ticket, one way for one person, costs £80. I don't actually think we've said where we're going yet, but here is a clue. It is the biggest city in the world. <whistles> right, let's get on this first flight. Despite our initial enthusiasm and the threat of missing the football game hanging over us, it became clear that we still had a long way to go. We're literally at the other side of the airport. Imagine if we missed the first flight. This plan could go wrong at any moment, so we needed to keep our eyes on the prize. And it was clear that our budget travel approach would see us sacrifice some travel luxuries. Another Ryanair stereotype that we're going to experience is that we've been separated. We've both got middle seats. I have a theory that there's not going to be anyone sat next to us though. Our flight to Dublin was full to the brim with tourists taking boozy weekend trips. And as we jetted over the Irish Sea, we noticed there were a real lack of Tottenham and Arsenal shirts on board, making us wonder if we'd made the right decision. But we couldn't dwell on this for too long because before we knew it, we were treated to a famous Ryanair landing. Now we're going to Dublin. The use of the toilet is not something that is common. We made it. We made it. First stop. Welcome to Dublin. Oh, I pinched my bum. Welcome to Dublin. The flight took 40 minutes from Manchester. It was very quick. Everything is going rather smoothly. Maybe too smoothly. And we're now here with around three and a half, four hours to actually go out and enjoy Dublin before we head to our next stop sat next to a new friend on the plane called Jamie and he told me that we cannot leave Dublin without trying a spice bag. In Manchester, a spice bag is a very, very different thing. <laughs> and to be honest, I'm more excited about the three o'clock kickoffs. So let's get a move on. 
As a former Split the G world champion, my focus had now 100% pivoted to securing a pint of ice cold black liquid. And despite time not being on our side, we decided that heading into the city centre was a risk worth taking. The only option that we have for getting into Dublin is walking or getting the bus. And it's quite a long walk, so we're going to get the bus. We still needed to achieve this while staying under the cost of the £80 train. But luckily, we found a bus that was just the ticket. We return into Dublin city centre and it only cost us five euros. At this point, we learned a valuable lesson that once you've bought a bus ticket, instead of filming yourself talking about the bargain you've just found, you should just get on the bus. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, it's leaving. It's leaving. Oh, we missed it. Not good. And this could have saved us from the disastrous turn of events that was just around the corner. We have had our first setback. Because the bus took so long from the airport to get here, we have missed the 3 p.m. kickoff. And Ryan is very unhappy. I am sad. In the distance, you can see that the three o'clock kickoffs have been on, but they've just finished. Oh, so frustrating. The reason that we missed it is because the bus took so long from the airport to get here. I genuinely think it took longer than the flight from Manchester. Hopefully Ryan cheers up because we do still have a few hours here in Dublin before we need to head back to the airport. There are still two things that I'm really excited to get ticked off whilst we're here in Dublin. I know what one of them is. One of them's quite obvious, one of them is less obvious. The first thing is a pint of Guinness, but we can't get one in there, it's way too expensive. Oh my God, that is pathetic. That is utterly shambolic. Do you know what Split the G is? It is a marketing ploy. Everyone tries to split the G and they've drunk more than a third of their drink in the first sip. So then they have to go to the bar and get another one and try it again. It's genius from Diageo. Not everything is perfect. We are sharing a Guinness because it's too much to get one each. <laughs> Would you be able to do this on the train? No, you wouldn't. With time ticking away, we turned our focus to the second item on our Dublin bucket list. And in the process, we started to ask big philosophical questions. Where do you find the spice bag? Is it just Chinese restaurants or are there special places dedicated to a spice bag. A few moments later. After some quick Googling, I've heard that this is the best place. To be fair, I have a lot of respect for any country whose national dish is the chicken fillet roll and a spice bag. Chinese food, especially salt and pepper chicken, is my favorite thing in the whole world. Shao Island. I don't think anything about this bag is good for you, but it does taste really good. It's crispy chips and then pieces of chicken in this like amazing salt and pepper seasoning. And we got curry sauce. I'm thinking that we've picked a good spot because it's really busy and there's so many Deliveroo drivers here. I say this with absolutely no exaggeration, it was one of the best things I've ever eaten. That is mission successful in Dublin. And um, now we have to head back to the airport. Using the return bus ticket we bought earlier, it was time for our second flight of the day. The journey continues. We're back at Dublin airport, ready to go for round two. Flight two. Two, London. We're on a night flight and I think the likelihood of getting delayed is probably quite high. We've been on the move now since 12 p.m. this afternoon, so we're coming up now to about eight and a half hours. This flight is obviously from Dublin to London, and it actually comes in even cheaper than the one we got this morning. The one we're about to get on is 21 pounds, which is a bargain in anybody's book. Are you impressed with that? I am impressed. The challenge isn't over yet, because when we land in London, we still need to get a train to Tottenham, so, National Rail could still come back to bite us. London, let's be having you. As we boarded our final flight, it was mixed emotions. In some ways, it felt like a victory lap. But you know what they say, the last yard is the hardest to gain, but it's the one that counts the most. We were traveling deep into the night and we needed to stay laser focused in order for our mission to be a success. We made it to Stansted Airport, it's 11.30 at night and we'll see you tomorrow morning for the final cost roundup. We made it! We have made it to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. But the big question is, did we do it in budget? 
it's time to run you through the numbers. Our first flight yesterday cost £22. The bus into Dublin, that cost £4.39. Our pint of Guinness, that was £2.55 each because we shared it. The spice bag was £6 each because we shared it. The second flight was £21 and the final train from Stansted Airport to Tottenham Hale cost £15 each. We spent £70.94 yesterday, which is a whole £9 cheaper than the train. Come on, let's go. Now let's go and enjoy the derby.